if you read the uh, <clears throat> the player's guide, the first couple of pages, you saw all these criteria of what you should be able to do uh, to be uh, rated at the 3.5 skill level. All that stuff comes from an organization called, well, I'll give you just the uh, initials, IPTPA. And that's an organization that uh, was created in 2015 because there is a a need to uh, accomplish a couple things. One, to have a body to certify people who held themselves out as pickleball instructors and people wondering, well, just how qualified are they? That sort of thing. So they, they have uh, training programs and uh, testing to uh, rate coaches at various levels. They also have training programs and testing to um, qualify what are called certified rating specialists <clears throat> and these are people who will go out to clubs like ours and do a formal assessment on players uh, and if they pass in this assessment uh, then they get that rating so why are we so fussed over ratings <clears throat> If you, for example, uh, go on the web page that has the uh, schedule for Sage Courts here, you'll notice things like 4.0 USAPA slash IPTPA rated play. So you see uh, four or five things of rated plays for, uh, at different levels. <clears throat> uh, so uh, to participate, in those activities, they want you to have an official rating, either from the IPTPA, the other body, USAPA, uh, you only get rated there if you participate in their sanctioned tournaments. And the vast majority of, of us do not play in tournaments. <clears throat> so um, there was that vacuum of how, how can the majority of pay, play, players get an official rating uh, if they don't play in tournaments. Well, now we have this mechanism. And uh, so, uh, you know, if you do reasonably well in this uh, four lesson modules, uh, you should be able to do well enough to succeed in a 3.5 rating uh, from a certified rating specialist of the IPTPA. And in fact, um, <clears throat> We have uh, one of their rating specialists coming here February 11th. Uh, so uh, in about two weeks after you've been involved in this, uh, I'll send out an email to all the participants and tell them what to do next if they're interested in, in, in uh, being rated on that date. Uh, <clears throat> increasingly, uh, big clubs are going to be wanting hard ratings for a number of their programs because we, en we uh, enjoy pickleball most when we're playing with people of similar ability to, our to ourselves. We don't want to be overmatched or no, there's no satisfaction in beating somebody who's seriously undermatched. So uh, that, that's part of the whole business of uh, having official ratings. <clears throat> uh, the fourth lesson in a module uh, in fact, we do a kind of mini simulation of the sort of assessment that the IPTPA does. So, you know, we test you on various shots. Uh, and, uh, you know, if uh, the shot, <clears throat> the criterion might be able to put 60% uh, of your of serves into the back third of the court. You know, so we'll have you serve five times, count the number of times it lands in the back third of the court and four to five, two out of five, whatever, and two shots like that. That's, that's one of the elements. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the um, tests they do is going to be our first sort of drill, and it's called windshield wiper dinking. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure what it is for our level, but uh, with their rating specialist, she, the rating specialist does all the feeding and the, and the shot testing. <laughs> So you'll be working with them and, and you're expected to do maybe 14 out of 20. So you do this windshield wiper dinking until there's been 20 dink attempts on your part. 
Yeah, and they, thanks. And they will uh, keep track of your success rate and so on. Yeah. All right, so uh, our fourth lesson is kind of a low stress way of you kind of getting a sense of, of what the formal uh, testing is like if you want to do it. Okay, so uh, Gary and I will uh, demonstrate the windshield wiper dinking. So uh, the point I was about to make is when I'm to the right of center going here, dinking, 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 I mean, we'll try to lead the player in the direction they're going. We get to this extreme, so it's naturally natural for me to be using my forehand dinking as we go this way and come back this way. Gary will be moving back in. Uh, him moving to the left then for the lefty, it's going to be natural for him to be move, hitting with your backhand as you move to your right that way and and so on. So, uh, uh, you know, use the natural hand or use the natural forehand. When I get over here, I'll probably switch the backhand to be hitting it back. Okay, so the complete cycle is out, back across, and then back to the center, and then it's your turn. Ah, we made it. <laughs> oh, the, the stress. The stress. So, so it, you know, the assessment, when you're dinking like that, do they have to land in the kitchen or not? <clears throat> they do have to, I think, in the kitchen. Yeah, it? probably. Yeah, we, we didn't do that every time, did we? Well, so, uh, go in pairs. Two people go out across and back. Then another what? pair oh. move in. And, okay. Hey, Marty. We're at work here. You better look back your own camera, on. Bernard. No screwing up. We got work to do here, Marty. Come on. Okay. Oh, oh, try it again. Yeah. Don't make me go in. Okay. This will be on ESPN tonight. Right. Highlights. Good. Yeah, if you Good. Uh, yeah. watch top level play, in fact, at the last national championships, uh, there was some broadcast on the TV of the games there from uh, Indian Wells, is it? And uh, yeah, I mean, you watch these top players, nothing special about the serve. I mean, so different from tennis, you know, that for tennis is all about a power serve. And uh, so nothing special about the serves. There's rarely an ace. Nothing special about the return of serve. They just hit it deep, even softly. And the third shot, there's usually no mystery about that. It's a drop shot. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard. So that's the most important. It's just the basic serve, return, then go for the drop. The drop, drop, serve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you shouldn't be trying to hit winners from a serve or the return of serve. I mean, if they happen to pop up a return of serve and you can and it bounces up here, well, sure, kill that. But if they're doing the right thing and returning serve to the back third of the court, five times out of six, they'll be hitting a drop shot and then everybody's into the dinking game. And that can go on for 14, 15, 20 dinks with these top players. Now I just read that if the, on that third shot, if one guy stays back, you don't do the third shot drop, you try to keep that guy back and hit to him rather than that hard third shot drop. You try to keep well, that guy back. If he stays back, yeah. then you hit him back. Yeah. But you almost want to be like you're on a string. If you come up, 
your partner should be right, right with you. Right. So mm -hmm. right with you the whole way. I don't want to play with someone where I hit a nice drop right. shot and I'm standing here and he's back there. Yeah. The drop shot just went out the window. But yeah. saying if you're serving, right. you shouldn't always be robotic and just say the third shot's always going to be a drop because that guy could be back there, right? Well, if he stays back there, then you don't do a drop shot. Okay. You, go, you go deep. Yeah, okay. Definitely. But you're, you get good yeah. players. They're, they're not, not going to be right. Not gonna right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. The other thing I was telling Ernie today, and uh, what's called with the dinking game, I thought this was an interesting statistic. This is a 5 0 guy that does a lot of clinics. 80% of the dinks, if you do it correctly, and someone's trying to do a kill shot in a dink, only 20% of them are going to be good. 80% of them are going to be bad. They're going to get one in occasionally. But when you're playing real good players and you hit a good dink shot where it's low into the kitchen, and you get the guy, you've all been there, we've all been there. Everybody wants to slam those mm. things. Yeah. Correct? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And if, you're, if you, it's up here, just get out of the way. It's going to go out of bounds. Mm. But only 20% of them are successful, even at the top 5-0 level. I guess it's probably the last word on digging today. Uh, that windshield wiper dink, you know, where we're doing cross court, you, you probably found that easier than than dinking straight ahead and keeping it in, right? Uh, because here you've only got, well, 7 feet to the net, you know, less than 14 feet. From here to here, you've got, I don't know, 17, 18 feet. Plus, the net's lower in the center, two inches lower than here. Um, and if you, you can hit a higher arching shot that's not attackable, you know, a high arch that comes down here, they got to wait and let it bounce. So uh, the percentages are better uh, on those cross-court dinks, and you're moving your opponents around, making it harder for them to hit. Yeah, okay, uh, the dink volley. Um, <clears throat> so when dinking, uh, you shouldn't give up this, this line. Uh, you probably see some of the players you play with, you, you know, a ball will come to the feet, they'll back up to here, and then they'll, they'll come back up to here, and they get backed up and that just gives your opponent a bigger zone in which to to uh, hit the ball and make a kill shot. So you, you try to maintain your position at the line. The toughest dink shot to get is one that's coming at your feet, especially on your backhand side. You know, we should be trying to aim to the opponent's backhand. But if you can reach a ball, I mean, these are balls that would otherwise come to your feet or your shin. If you can reach a ball so that you're contacting it 18 inches above the ground and eight, roughly 18 inches in front of your body, you should take that in the air. You know, don't step back and let it bounce. Uh, getting it back, it sort of gives the opponent less time to get reset. And uh, uh, as I say, you start backing off your line, they're starting to gain an yeah. advantage. So uh, Gary and I will do a demo, then we we'll want you to drill on. So it's just <clears throat> uh, in intentionally hitting to each other ball dinks, but high enough for them to volley, but ideally not high enough for them to kill. I mean, we won't be hitting kill shots. But uh, <clears throat> balls that aren't at attackable, but they've got the volley. We'll get there. Okay, so try to be hitting uh, shots to each other that you can both, you know, ideally make it a bit of a game. Like how many volley shots can the two of us put together in a row without flubbing it? Yeah. Very often a few of them that I should have took on a fly. We did have a hip eight weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to step back, so Ernie's correct. I should have taken about four of those on the fly, but because I can't, yeah, myself, yeah, I yeah. So it it takes a while to build that into your game, and you know, so it becomes instinctive. You see that earlier trajectory, and you're ready to do the right thing. If you have to stop and think about it, it's usually too late. Okay, let's uh, work in pairs again. Mm.
on this side. That's the trouble. What's the trouble? Well, knowing where that line is without looking at it. <laughs> yeah. In doing dinking drills, uh, we can develop a bad habit, and that is letting your paddle down because we know that person's going to dink back to us. And so, well, what's the point of me coming back up? <clears throat> but <clears throat> even in dinking drills, you <laughs> even in dinking drills, uh, you should, after each one, get back to the ready position, right? Because, uh, well, uh, good players, if you're down like here after you dink, they'll snap one at your torso, and even if you get your paddle on, it's going to be your paddle doing this, and you just pop it up for them to slam. So, uh, um, having your paddle in this position, you're much uh, more ready to uh, defend that. and. Uh, any other circumstance you're at the line, whether they're deep, you know, be, be ready for, uh, uh, to take the ball at, at chest height. <clears throat> okay, um, the offensive lob, we'll add this uh, to your arsenal of, uh, of uh, shots you can do from a dinking situation. So Gary's going to speak to that. What we're going to do those drills, I remember right, Ernie, we're dinking three times. Got to go over three times, correct? Oh, that's the dinking game. I mean, so, oh, well, yeah, all, all we need to do is uh, we're going to have them uh, get lobbed from their forehand. So uh, you or I will just dink one or two. Oh, so when they, they get, you know, they get a couple feels of the ball and then they can uh lob it uh, no magical number of times so yeah so okay uh yeah you're a lefty okay so um i hear that all the time yeah <laughs> i noticed we got a lot no here. <laughs> no uh, i'll uh all we'll work on here at this stage is is uh lobbing with your forehand it's a higher skill level to be lobbing with your backhand okay so <clears throat> so the idea is uh Gary's just going to lob it over both of us so we can't reach it and yet land in the backcourt. Okay, whenever you're ready. Hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. How can I have any of those today? Okay, one more time. So uh, it's just kind of an, an exaggerated dink. Uh, you're going to be telegraphing it somewhat to your opponent, but what the heck? Uh, you, you need a bigger uh, backhand swing. I don't want him to get away with a perfect record. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, maybe uh, uh, just to start it off, uh, Gary and I will feed dinks to each of you individually. Um, so give you three lobs and you cycle in. Then we'll turn you loose with each other to uh, uh, one person be the feeder, the other person the lobber, and Gary and I will chase down ball. And... Good, 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 good. Okay. So, what are you going to do about it if somebody does hit a lob over your shoulders? So we're talking about now defending against the lob. <clears throat> hmm? Oh well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for our demographic. Yeah, right. Don't go like this. 
<laughs> Backing up doesn't seem to work. Uh, I mean, backpedaling doesn't seem to work. <clears throat> okay, so uh, there's two kinds of situations when they lob against you. Uh, if it's a short lob, that with a couple back steps, you can get to it fine, but if it's going well over your head, you know, not be doing that. And even turning and dashing back, uh, we have a better solution. Okay. So, okay, but first we'll do the uh, defending the, the short lob, I guess, Gary, and okay. uh, I guess uh, I should be. Do you want me to lob to you? Since I don't. Do you want me to do the short lob? Yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, a short lob, and uh, so <clears throat> anything more than a couple of steps back, just let it go. Okay, so yeah, sure. I mean, I, you want to do it for Dink, okay? Uh, maybe, oh, here, let's, here, here, here. yeah. So we'll do a couple of Dinks, and you maybe do a short lob, and... My paddle up. Well, it's nice with the <laughs> That's a high dink. I could have used that one for lunch. Good. <laughs> oh, nice. oh, yeah, well, okay, that, that's a great, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll get a short one. Okay. Anyway, that wasn't too graceful, but <clears throat> point is, if a couple back steps you can get it fine uh, okay but now that depending the uh, deep lob okay we uh, okay yeah yeah the general rule is uh, to take lobs of any sort uh, in the air the only ones I don't it's relatively short ones that have come from a height. I know they're going to bounce quite high. Uh, so then I wait to, to the top of the bounce so, to, to slam it. Let's set up uh, to demonstrate defending the deep lob. So let's get a couple players there. Uh, Gary and I will be over here. We're defending. Okay, Gary. So this uh, right. requires teamwork and communication. But the idea is... Uh, that both of us need to make a quick judgment from the early trajectory whether it's going to be shallow or deep. Is, is Gary going to be able to get it with a couple of steps back or is it going to be beyond him? <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> it's probably best if it's going deep over him. I see that and I say, got it. And I chug a lug back here, and I chug a lug over here. to get it. Okay. Gary switches over there to get it, and then I do my thing here. Uh, if I can get back comfortably, I might just try to hit a drop shot to get it back there so I can get back up here, and Gary's there, Bert. Right, if you can take it on the fly, the hardest shot is a drop shot, correct? Yeah. If you can hit on the fly, you don't have to do, you don't have to do another second drop shot. That's the way I always look at it. Yeah. But if it's a perfect thing, you got to. Mm -hmm. right. Well, when you guys switch, do you stay in that position yes, then? Yeah, you stay right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. You stay right there until, unless they hit <clears> another they lob do it again. where we got to dance around it. Yeah. That doesn't happen very right. often. The other thing I might do, if it's a more desperate thing and I don't feel comfortable hitting a drop, is hit a deep, try to hit a deep lob back to them and, and, uh, Hope for the best. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, we're Ernie, you win it. <laughs> Good job. Nice no, just uh, an exhalation of relief. I uh, didn't blow it. Yeah. Too short on you. That's what you're doing. Keep it up. You're in. You're about to. Oh! 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 It's time to talk about that. It's reacting to you. Okay. That's all right. We'll wait for the right long shot. Don't call it. Yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, you mean any one of them? Any one of them. Yeah. That's the good one. I'll just play it, yeah. 
Well played, well played at both ends. Oh, heavens, heavens. That's a good lob there, Ted. Good lob. Got it. Nice. Oh, good. Oh. Way to move, Brian. Nice. Into the lob. Into the lob. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, one to Hey. All right. Oh, man. I got one right here. Wow, you guys are too good. Good shot. Very nice. Yeah. Got over. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's those quick or those uh, shallow lobs are yeah. the hardest to react to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you want to do here? Marilyn, you're going to be the lobber here. Almost. Oh, almost, almost, almost. <clears throat> the back end one. That's yeah, yeah. You also touch it. Yeah. It's like you have to do it, and you got the lob. I'm going to turn like this. That's what I'm going to do to get back. Now, if I can get, if I can get back there quick enough to tie it up and take it over here, I want to take it over. Catch it. And what I always try to do, my. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll go yeah. right down the middle. <clears throat> that was good. So I'll yeah. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you can't, don't get hurt. <laughs> they feel good, don't they? Let it go. Let it go. Nobody's going to remember the shot the next day in Maryland, that was very nice. Nice hustle, Kelvin. Keep it going, yeah. Keep it going there, guys. Get up there, get up there. Oh, nice. Get up there. Oh, nice thing, Marilyn. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> mm. You guys want to yeah. declare who's going to be the lobber, then? Good job. Mm -hmm. Nice lob, Linda. Just out of reach. That's perfect. You know what you did there, too? You lobbed that thing back in. <laughs> mm. I got it. Uh, I don't yeah. Got it. Yeah, so you did what we really don't want you to be doing. What? Oh, backing you, you, yeah, back. you went back all like this. Yeah. No, I was back. You weren't sidestepping, no? Although, yeah. Oh, okay. Although, uh, again, uh, from over here. Well, I broke my left <laughs> foot doing that. I yeah, yeah. Uh, when you saw that going deep, you sh could have said, got it. And he, he yeah. stop and let you get it and him right. move over here. Yeah. 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 I got, I got, and it's from the angle, you can see it better than like coming around. That's right. Uh, Gary yeah, yeah. or I will toss the ball into the, the kitchen for the dinking to start. So the first three uh, shots have to land in the kitchen. Thereafter, it's game open. Okay. okay? Game on. Game on. Game on. Right. Game open. Right. <clears throat> so... Uh, you're going to be able to use all your accumulated dinking skills. So you're going to do things like, after you dink, you're going to be in the ready position. Uh, uh, offensively, you're not going to give up this line. You're going to dink volley if you can reach it the right place. Um, what else is new? We haven't talked about shading. Do you folks know shading? Or uh, moving together as a duo. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what she. Like I think that's it. Correct. Your, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> you know, if they're uh, that side dink somewhere over here, this person's got to go over to get it. Uh, this person should. This partner should have moved over about to here. <clears throat> uh, this partner's wanting to cut off a shot down the line. Okay. Another uh, weak spot would be down the center. Well, that's why this person moves over here. It's tough for them to hitting a winning shot over here. They may hit it over here, but you've got more time because of the length of the shot to get over here and get it. And if they do hit it here, you both get a swing this way. So it's as though you're connected by a, a what, a 10 foot or nine foot string. Like we're just said, if somebody can hit that perfect shot right in the corner of the kitchen that yeah. you can't get to, you just. Tip your hat. Hell, you earned it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a tough shot to make up. moving together, uh, both both sides are following the ball, shifting with the ball left to right as the ball goes left to right in the dinking game. Both sides. Um, so, if you hit, if you do hit a drop shot from here over there, you and your partner then are getting over here. Uh, 
to be in a, in a defensive position. You can try the offensive lob that we've just been doing. All sorts of uh, things to work into the game. Uh, targeting the backhand side of your opponent when you're, when you're dinking, just trying to put it at their feet on their backhand side. It's going to be a game without serving. That's what it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a game without serving. Your servant is going to be the I'll, I'll feed it in. Yeah. Game's on. So. Right here, Tony. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's one. That's two. One more. Game on. Put the goddamn thing away. Okay. But the biggest thing is don't forget what you're taking on there. Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> Good. Okay. Who did I hit that to? Kevin? And if you yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I'll. I know. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my God! Oh my God! Burn, back, Burn in. <laughs> I think we're in a ringer. Yeah, I think you do. Lucky once in a while, right, Ernie? <laughs> Oh, he's such a humble guy. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, back to Kevin here. So it's 2 0. Tom, what did you do wrong there? Backed up. You're backed mm -hmm. up. Uh, okay, so you start it again? Uh, 3 0. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in an ideal world, you'd. Uh, uh, practice all this stuff all week endlessly. Um, although, if you, <clears throat> you know, if you go out into a social group, uh, it's tough to practice the stuff you should be practicing if other people aren't trying to do the same thing. I mean, if you're doing a drop shot and your partner just hanging back, it's almost counterproductive in the game. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> you've, uh, in at least one of the emails to you, you see all one another's email addresses all there. Um, so one possibility is among yourselves, you find a group to get together to, to practice and you all have the same goals. Um, <clears throat> and there's videos at the end of each lesson you can click on and watch and uh, pick up a few reminders and points. Um, so I'm glad to have met you. Uh, Bill's here, we'll here after. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing this uh, next yeah. Wednesday. Yep. So yeah. practice what we've learned. Yeah. Right? If we can. Yeah. yeah. Get a friend if you can. If you go, like I said, our group over here. Go for an hour and practice everything you just learned today. Yep. I hate yes, I love to play pickleball. I, I'm the worst practice guy in the world. God, football, basketball, they went by my practice. I'd be sitting at the end of the bench out there. I hated practice. But I come up here and watch these good players. Five, four, five. They're practicing couple days a week. Yeah. I've been pressed. I gotta start doing that. I'll be dead honest with you. Mm -hmm. But if you can practice, your game will go. Mm -hmm. There's no ifs, ands, or buts on it. I just start today till the end here. I see some good improvements. Especially out of you young lady. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah our four five five oh group we practice uh Tuesdays and Thursdays from two to four. And it's ninety percent of it's just dinking. Yeah. And I just got out of it just left the tournament and the, the team that beat us won goals. Mm -hmm. Dink, and I don't think a ball went higher than this. Wow. Yeah. Literally, an inch. Yeah. On every dink and every shot they had. I mean, they were, they were. Yeah. They were yeah that's more or less the key, though. It's just key. Mm. Just well, yeah, it's true. Low, and, and also, you generally, from about here to the net is really, you really want to get it. Because if you get it out here, then you can start reaching it. And it's easier for your opponent to attack if they're hitting the ball in the air. If you're hitting it here, they can't reach it. So, low, and, and rather than have seven feet, Focus on three and a half feet. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you just gotta, when we get to the, when we get to the, air, the section of the training where we do the drops, the same thing. Drops to me are the gold shot. I mean, that's worth the yeah. gold. And you just gotta, you gotta hit thousands and thousands and thousands. You don't have to do all in a day or a week or a month, but just do it all the time. Yeah. You never get too good at being mm. drops. That just takes yeah. repetition. I found when I was at, well, I guess I'm still at the learning stage. What am I well, saying? <laughs> but uh, early on, you know, and there's so much thrown at you, uh, so many aspects of thinking, you know, oh my God. <clears throat> so I would just focus on a couple 
one or two things for a week until that became more or less second nature and then move on to the next thing. And still many days I go out, I'm thinking, okay, today in club play or whatever, I'm going to work on this. Yeah. I remember playing Ernie three years ago. I, I just started playing on there. It was like bullets getting shot. I don't think any of us hit anything under 90 miles an hour. That was oh, our game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ernie will admit that. I have to get my chest. Hitting it in here, that means they're stepping in. Almost Not necessarily. Every... A lot of it is a lot of cross court. So they're doing it diagonally, and that sure. way it's just going over, you know, from you're hitting it from here, and it's coming over. This is like right here. Wow. Yeah, it's really mm. hard to get it that short when you're going straight across. Yeah. Right. So diagonal is the best approach. Well, it depends. I mean, once there's so many, it depends on who your opponents are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you got two players and one's a strong dinker and the other one isn't, yeah. even though the, one, the, the weak dinker may be across from you, that may be the first mm. go-to. I was watching a YouTube video on the dinking, and they said it's okay if you can get your apex of the ball to come down. You can get it high as long as it comes mm -hmm. down within this first half of the ball. Well, that's true, although you still got to watch the bounce. No, you're mm. Because, like, in, in today, uh, the ball from here on, you're going to get it slammed at yeah. at the higher level. If, if that ball is, you say, it, it comes down and it bounces, and it's, like, right here, yeah. you're going to get killed. I mean, it's coming back at 100 miles an hour. So that's why you want it even lower. And you get it lower by keeping it lower. Sure. And, or, you know, and having a, a flatter trajectory. So it's not going to, it's going to, if it bounces, it's going to bounce more backwards as opposed to up. So if you're, if you're hitting a dink and it comes way up, it's got a, a high arc on it. Well, yeah, I didn't mean that down. high. I, I meant if you can get the apex a foot off, off here and have it land yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's. That'll, that's the video that I was yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, not, not up here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Find the zone that works for, you, for whoever you're playing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So just practice, practice, practice. Like Ernie says. Yeah. yeah. And, um, the things that you really got to work on. Because, like he says, you got to make it automatic. You, 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 you don't have time to think about it in the game. More you repetition to do, the more automatic it becomes. You look for your wife, you're not going to be home from mine. We're going to put in the lights. You've already got lights all night. Yeah. That's what I like to come on. Yeah, and the sun's almost set, folks, so let's. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for my jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as that sun goes down. Yeah. Okay.